All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. If you don't already know me, I'm Levi. So I'm planning on starting a new project soon, something that I've been thinking about for a really long time. It's going to be quite the big project, I think. It is a coil gun, or I probably shouldn't call it a coil gun for YouTube reasons. So um, maybe an electromagnetic accelerator or something like that. So thinking that it would be pretty big, I sat down and I decided that I should probably make like a list of notes, different bullet points I need to do in order to make the larger projects. I thought it'd be a good idea to just divide everything up into individual kind of modules and then go from there. So I looked at different um, notes apps and things like that and there wasn't too much that I really liked. I just wanted something pretty simple, something quick to use. So I decided that I would just make my own because why not? A notes app that's designed specifically for and only for myself. One whose primary purpose is to keep track of all of the individual parts that go into making this first project, this coil gun. Electromagnetic accelerator, I mean. So far on this channel, everything I've done has been physical. It's either been like a mechanical kind of thing or it's been electrical. And I would categorize both of those as being kind of in the physical realm. I have not done anything yet with programming, so this will be a nice first. And I taught myself to program years ago, and I've been doing it ever since, so this isn't a new thing or anything. This is, I just haven't shown it on here yet. And I initially intended to document this properly, like do a little bit of programming, and then talk about it, explain it, and then keep on going back and forth like that. But that didn't happen. Instead, I kind of got carried away with it, and I just went ahead and finished the whole thing within a few days. But that does mean that I can show it to you now and explain my thought process, explain the ideas behind it. So you are currently looking at the finished product. And then over here is all the code for it. Everything is written in HTML, CSS, and primarily JavaScript. The HTML is quite simple. The CSS, there's a little bit here. It's probably more complicated than it needs to be. It's not a ton. The JavaScript is the bulk of it. Again, it's not a ton. It's up to 400 lines, which isn't too much, but it's something. Then I also made it in the brackets IDE, if you're wondering. But so this is what it looks like. Over here on the left side, we've got the projects menu. Up top here, there's a little banner that says notes and such. Then there's this top box up here, which says new project on it now. That's the project name. And then right here, it says new task with new item. This is one individual task. So when I first open this up, it automatically creates this new project and a new task with a new item in it. Now each of these three areas that you see text here, they're all text input. So I can type into each of these. So I can go in here and delete the project name and call it something new. I'll call it test project. And notice that when I change the name of the project up top here, it also changes in the menu button over here. Actually, as an example, I'm just going to make this project a 3D printer. So up top here, next to the name, there's two buttons here. There's a plus and there's an X. The plus button will add new tasks to your existing project. And then the X button will delete the project. And it also prompts you asking you to make sure that you do actually want to delete it. And I'll cancel that. Oh, and then there's also another plus button over here by projects so I can add multiple projects and they're all saved in here and I'll just go ahead and delete that one so then for something like a 3d printer one of my tasks might be figuring out the electronics and then maybe another task is is designing it in CAD and then I'll put one more in here I'll make it uh, assemble parts so the intent is that just the project of course is the overall thing and then the tasks are the broader categories of things that need to be done within the project then each one of these, as you can see, comes with a new item. And again, I can change the item to be whatever I want. These are supposed to be the lowest level of things. Items are in tasks. Tasks are in a project. So for the electronics, I might want to figure out the display. Now notice that the tasks also have little plus buttons, little X buttons. Again, the X is to delete the task. And I can add a plus here to add a new item. I might want to figure out the motor drivers maybe the uh, heated bed probably want to figure out the nozzle 
or whatever. I mean, again, you can type in whatever you like, so it doesn't matter. So now I've got a overarching project. I've got a few tasks and then each of these individual items. And then next to each of these items, there's a little circle with a little bit of faded stuff around it. I can click on these. I can click on these little dots. They act as radio buttons. They're kind of just a modified radio button. I click on them, they change color, and it automatically crosses out the corresponding item. So let's say I'm starting to work on the electronics. I first get the display worked out, cross it off there, and maybe next to the heated bed, motor drivers, and then once I get everything crossed out, you'll see the uh, title of the task will automatically get crossed out too. I can also easily delete things from the list. It's just as simple as clicking onto it and literally deleting it. You click off and it disappears. And then as you add more tasks, they stack up in rows of three like this. And again, you can have as many projects as will fit on this menu. And then they're all stored individually. But the most interesting thing about what I've done here is how I stored this because all of this is just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. There's no server or anything like that. There's no way for me to store data on the cloud, nothing like that. So you may think, well, if you can't store it on the cloud, then surely everything here will just be deleted once you close the tab. But that's not the case. So I have everything loaded up here, as you can see. Then if I go ahead and just close the tab, it's gone, but it's not all lost. So I can go back into my Chrome browser and I've got a bookmark to it right here. This also isn't on a website or anything. I'm just accessing the files directly through Chrome. So I can go to my bookmark here and everything is still here. The project is still there. All the individual tasks are still there. All the items are still there. Even what is and is not marked off is just the same as it was before. So you could shut down your computer and it all be saved there. What I'm using to do this is kind of like cookies. Oftentimes they'll open up a website and it'll ask you if you're okay with it using cookies to better enhance your user experience. So that's a way of storing information local to the browser for that website for future reference. I'm not an expert in this stuff, but apparently cookies are like an outdated method. They're old habits that programmers haven't quite gotten out of using. And what is the, the new way, the modern way to replace cookies is using what's called local storage, which again is just storing data specific to that website, that URL on your browser. So all the data for the project name, the task names, the items, all of that are stored locally on your browser. So this being the case, of course, if I went to another computer, I wouldn't have the same data on it or anything. But it also means that I don't have to sign into anything or anything like that. And it's my computer, so no one else is going to be using it. So it doesn't matter much. It also means that everything is just automatically saved. So I don't need to worry about that either. A system like this where everything is stored in local storage probably isn't going to be the best thing for everyone, but I don't care. I'm the only one using it, so whatever. So looking at the actual coding here, the HTML itself is very simple. On the HTML document, there's really only, what, like three divs and maybe a, a button here or there to get things started. And then you'll also notice that we have this kind of thing here so that when we start the game, it'll actually load all of the JavaScript based stuff in. The reason that the HTML can be so simple is because the JavaScript is putting more HTML into what is already here, which is making it more complex and doing it automatically. So pretty much everything in here, except for a, a couple things just at the very bottom, it are they're all just functions. And they are called from somewhere in the HTML based off of some, uh, some event. So this here is the first one. This is the load function. What it's doing is pretty simple. It's just loading in the data that goes in the menu. So like I said earlier, this kind of thing here where you're adding a long string of HTML looking stuff into something else. This is adding HTML into the existing HTML. So then there's another thing down here where it's document.getElementById projects.innerHTML. This is setting the HTML inside of it to something else in order to add more onto it. And it's this kind of, I don't know, trick, I guess you could call it, that's used repeatedly in order to make this whole thing a reality. And there's a little function here, which is new project. This is just adding a project, as you might expect. Then a bigger one here, change name. This is, of course, changing the name of a project. 
and then it has a little argument here which is num that is the number of the project all of the projects are automatically given a number starting at one and then two three four whatever but the way I'm doing this is really janky I think it's almost certainly not how you should be doing this but it works so I did it anyways I definitely have a tendency to just do things in the first way that I think of which isn't the best way to code oftentimes but it still usually works so the reason this isn't how it should be done is because local storage can only store strings or at least as far as I know it can only store strings so what I have is I have a local storage variable called projects and that projects is all of the project names so in one string I have the project name of project 1 project 2 project 3 whatever they are and they're all just separated by semicolon. Then I'll have for loops that are similar to this one that'll go through and find the semicolons around the project number that I'm actually looking for and then use the data in there to set or to change the corresponding project name. So ideally I'd be using some sort of array or array list in order to keep track of these things, but I mean it works, so if it ain't broke, I also have a quick algorithm like you see here which just searches for the input looks to see if there's any semicolons in it and if it is it just switches it to a colon just to keep the user from breaking it by putting in semicolons where the program isn't expecting there to be any and I mean you don't need a semicolon in the name anyway so it's not that big a deal then the next function is load content here this is probably the biggest one here this is the majority of the computational power I'd imagine load content is loading everything that is not the menu so all of the actual the title the tasks all the items all of that is in this function so you see a couple of these big orange blocks of, of string data these are all where the program is manipulating the existing HTML so like this one up here this is putting in the title and then you'll see that there's some variables in here. Those are just used to make sure that the actual name of it is in the title. So this block up here, that's determining the title. These ones down here is in a very large for loop that's, just, that's creating all the task objects. And then these three smaller ones down here are what are creating the individual items. So yeah, this is the majority of it. It's a pretty complicated thing but it's also not the most complicated thing. Mostly it's just tedious stuff. Nothing's really too unique about it. Another quick function, new task, just adds a new task onto the existing task local storage variable. The one that did kind of throw me for a loop is this next function here. This is the delete project. Um, when I started doing this, I didn't realize how complicated deleting something could actually be. Like I said earlier, everything is numbered. So you might have a project called 3D printer and another project called drone, something like that. But according to the computer, it views it as project one and project two. What this means is that if I delete project one, I want to file project two back up. So delete project one, project two becomes the new one, three becomes two, so on and so forth, as, as far as you need. This can become very difficult because everything has a lot of local storage variables specific to it. Project 1 isn't just one local storage variable that has everything, it's a whole bunch of them. So if I want to delete project 1, I gotta take the name out of the actual projects variable. I then have to delete the variable that keeps track of all the tasks and then replace it with the next one and then delete the task variable from the next one. And then the big thing is I have to delete all of the individual local storage variables for each and every tasks items. I have to delete all of those and then replace them with all of the next projects task item variables and then delete all of the next projects task item variables so you don't have redundant data. I also made the function while I was watching a movie so that didn't make anything any simpler but whatever it's done it works it's not great but again if it ain't broke. Then we've got another function here delete task which again has to do a similar thing but it doesn't have to do it with everything so it's significantly simpler and then change task which is very similar to the change name new item which is similar to new project and then change item it's kind of long but that's really deceptive it's not complicated then there's a couple at the end here there's toggle checked and strike task those have to do with the check marks the little radio buttons 
so I hadn't planned on doing those when I first started this out so I kind of had to stick them in at the end but like I said earlier every individual task has its own local storage variable which then has all of the data for the items separated by semicolon and then for the radio buttons I needed some way to store whether or not they were checked or unchecked and I needed data for every task every item inside of every task so what I ended up doing is I just created a another local storage variable in tandem with those ones that are storing all the item data and I even gave it the same name just with a C in front of it for a checkbox or something and then instead of storing the string data of all of the items I instead just had a bunch of I's and O's as many as there were items so if it was checked that corresponding one the corresponding index would be set to I and if it wasn't it would be set to O and then I have a for loop that just goes through everything says oh you're an I then you get checked oh you're an O you get unchecked simple as that and then you click on it and it goes in and ed edits them so that's all the code for this I don't think there's any point in really going super in-depth or anything I mean, none of this is particularly complicated, it's just fairly redundant. I did also in the CSS add transitions, so I made it look fancy too. So you might notice when I hover over any of these buttons here, or the menu buttons, the shadow under it becomes larger. So it's almost like the button is coming out towards you a little bit. Then I also did a thing with these radio buttons, that when you click on it, it fades to the color. It doesn't just snap to the color like that. So just a little touch, made it cool. I enjoyed it. So this is the finished notes project management task management app whatever you want to call it I keep calling it an app I do think it's like technically a web app um, so app is so inappropriate oh, though it is just in a browser um, and I'm very happy with this I'm generally making HTML stuff and CSS stuff it is very difficult in order to make it actually look nice and this doesn't look half bad so I am curious to know if anyone actually cares about this uh, personally I find electronics mechanics general robotics kind of stuff I find that way more interesting than programming and programming is kind of just the necessary evil like I know how to do it I think I'm pretty good at it but if I can avoid it I, I would so I am interested to know if people do enjoy this kind of stuff and would like me to do more of this kind of thing but I am very happy with this it looks good it works just as I intended it to and I do plan on at least trying to use this for all my upcoming projects or at least maybe most of them and I don't think it should be too hard using it seeing as how it is really simple I mean you just open up your browser it's right there simple as that but I'm very happy with this maybe you learned something maybe you got some inspiration hopefully you did this was a fun quick little thing and I kind of got the programming out of my system for a little while. I don't need to come back to it for a while. But if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, then feel free to say. But that's all I have for now, so 